Wow. Well, you certainly get an A for organization, Steve. Why, thank you, Cal. It's all about being prepared. Yes, but I mean, don't you think you're going a bit overboard? It's just a simple card loin recipe. Oh, absolutely not. Be prepared. That's my motto. Hmm. Gee, Steve, I didn't know you were a Boy Scout. Welcome to another edition of One Chef, One Critic. Hi folks, I'm Carl Wells, food critic for The Telegram. And I'm Chef Steve Watson of Central Dairies. Well, Steve, the French have a term for it. It's called mise en place, which means everything in its place. That's the key to good cooking, organization, right? Absolutely, Carl. When I used to be in the kitchens, I always had to have everything ready prior to service. And I do that at home now. If I'm working with a recipe, preparing a meal, I like to have everything ready prior to going to the stove or the grill or the oven. So you have your salt in place, if you're going to use lemon, that's got to be out and cut. Absolutely. Your herbs have to be out and ready to go, your oil, so on and so forth. Because right. if the cod is in the pan and you don't have this stuff out and you're going to the cupboard, chances it's are going to burn. it's going to burn. Absolutely. And you don't want that to happen. Great thinking there. Well, on the program today, we have a very special guest. He is Reverend Guy Matthews of Gower Street United Church. Reverend Guy is a great communicator, so I imagine he'll be communicating some interesting stories on the show today. What are we going to be cooking exactly? We're going to be cooking these beautiful cod loins on top of the stove with some leeks and some tomatoes. Oh, that sounds mm. really good. And we have a guest chef today, as usual, and she is... Pat Watson, also known as Mrs. Steve <laughs> Watson, uh, the real talent in that family, let me tell you, and she's going to be doing a, a rhubarb upside down cake, a first for one chef, one critic. <laughs> Stay tuned. For a complete listing of one chef, one critic recipes, wine lists, and more, check out our website. Let us know what you think of the show at 757-9600 or send us an email at onechef.onecritic at rci.rogers.com. We're delighted to welcome to the program now Reverend Guy Matthews. Welcome, Reverend Guy. Thank you very much. <laughs> nice to be here. Nice to have you. Okay, Stephen, what are we going to be uh, cooking up with uh, the Rev here? Well, actually, actually, what we're going to do today, Reverend, is we're going to be cooking some cod loins uh, with some leeks and some tomatoes on top of the stove, and we're going to poach them with a little bit of white wine. But we're going to get Carl to make, it's, it's my version, of, I think, of fish and chips, you know. So we're oh, going to saute yeah. some potatoes here. We've got some blue, some white, some red potatoes. I'll give them to Carl if you can. It's the most it colorful uh, oh, yeah. plate of <laughs> chips I've ever seen. Yeah. And, and they've already been blanched. I, I just partly steamed them. Okay. Them, you see, so. so, what do you want me to do? Just, just some oil uh, over there and just saute them off. Saute them. Okay. And I'll give you a spatula. Thank here. you. And now I've got the pan nice and hot there. Okay. And I'll get you to put a little bit of olive oil in there. Sure. No and I'm going to just slice mm -hmm. some of our leeks up first and then uh, away we go. Do you want to use all of this? Uh, no, about half of it, I think. Okay. That'll be yeah. good. That's about right. I think. Yeah. Here we go. Perfect. So, Guy, uh, you're an outport lad, are you? I am indeed. Yes, I so indeed. I guess you've had more than one uh, feed of uh, fish? I have, but not as much as people think. No? No. It's, uh, people think, I think, because you come from rural Newfoundland, you're going to have lots of fish, but, but we didn't. And I grew up in a community of about 1,000 people, and there were probably five families who fished. Everybody else worked in the woods or the mines or went away. So it was kind of different. And you could throw a rock from our house to the salt water, but... You know, didn't go fishing, so we got fish from somebody else. So it was very rare. Wow. Well, that's uh, that's interesting to hear. You're right, though. I think most people assume if you're from New rural Newfoundland, you've always you know got access to fish, yep. and sure. yep. uh, it's something that you eat frequently. Yeah. Well, I, I know that we had. I have one professor who uh, was from Germany, but loved to visit Newfoundland. So they stayed with us a few summers ago. And uh, we used to ask them every evening what they wanted the next day, and every day turned out to be fish. So Deanna, my wife, said to them on Thursday or Friday, you've had fish all week, so uh, yeah. <laughs> why you want chicken or beef tomorrow? They said, oh, no, no, don't change your menu for us. Because, you know, we know you have fish, and we said to them, we hardly ever have fish. Oh, but don't you always have fish? Don't Newfoundlanders eat fish yeah. every day? And no, yeah. no, we didn't. So yeah. it was news to them. What's a typical week like for you at Gower Street Church? Well, the, the thing I like about my work, and I, probably why even after 30 years of doing it, is because there's no such thing. as a, a we, we kid at home, and, and my kids will say to me once in a while, oh, that's okay, you only work one day a week. <laughs> 
and I'll say to them, no, no, I only work half a day a week. We do one service. <laughs> but it's, it's not a half a day. But, you know, the, the Sunday piece is scheduled. It's there. Everybody comes and you know that. And you have, you have meetings throughout the week and all that stuff. But I think the thing I enjoy most about my work is no two days are the same, let alone two weeks. Right. And yeah. it's because you're dealing with people. Yeah. So, you know, you have the, the weddings and, and the funerals and the emergencies. But it's always interacting with people in different places sure. at different times. So yeah. that's what I enjoy about it. Yeah, they're coming along quite nicely now. We'll just keep them about one more minute, and then we'll have our beautiful cod loins there to go into. Interesting. I mean, I ate cod growing up, but so what cut of the cod is the loin? That's well, you have the whole fillet, and of yep. course the, the, the tail itself is going to the point. Yes. Yep. Now, this is the loin. The belly part is cut out, so it's basically from here on the back of the fish itself. Oh, okay. And that's the thickest part there, as you, as you can see. These are beautiful. These are about oh, an inch, an inch and a half thick, so to speak. So. What we'll do now, I'll just give them a little season, a little salt and pepper. There, there, and there. Okay. And then I'll do that to the leeks as well, because I don't want to flip the cot, the cot over, so I'm just going to season the bottom of the, the leeks there. Do you want this stirred a bit? Yes, please. Yeah. Thank you. So if somebody were to ask you, uh, you know, what what is your role in in leading the congregation at Gower Street United Church, what, what would you say? Well, it's, it's probably very little different than in any United Church congregation uh, in the sense that I guess some people would refer to it as pastor. And, and that's probably what the role is. It's kind of, there's administration, which is, and usually joining in with other people doing administration because it's a large congregation, mm -hmm. which means you have a lot of volunteers. Whereas the years I spent in rural Newfoundland, you didn't have a lot of volunteers, so you handled a lot more of the stuff hands on. But in the bulk of my work outside the administration and the worship preparation and, uh, of course, interaction with the community, you represent the church in the community. And in St. John's, that means a different thing mm. than if you're somewhere else because you, you, know, you, you, you get to, to, uh, to interact with people from all walks of life and you represent the church at church functions, but also you know, government functions and, mm. and you're just kind of being a part of the community. Right. And, and the, biggest, the biggest single part of, of, uh, of the work is the pastoral piece that people don't see mm -hmm. because most of it happens in private and sure. most of it happens, some of it happens on site at the church, most of it happens hospital settings, people's homes. homes. Yep. And it depends. If, if I'm, you know, um, in my experience, uh, if there was probably a, a man who's my age who really wanted to talk to you about something, probably not as comfortable coming to a, an office setting mm -hmm. for whatever reason, but, you know, it's a good place to go to Tim Hortons or meet them at work or That's right. all that yeah. kind of stuff, and, you, and yeah. you, you get a chance to interact there. Yeah. So what have we got going okay, here? Okay, remember, see what we're going to do. We put our cod loins in there. They're okay. seasoned. We put some cherry tomatoes in there. I've also laid some thyme on there and seasoned. We're now going to add a little bit of wine in there. Feel free. Well, listen, I'm not a great <laughs> wine person. You've got to tell me here. What? Go ahead, go okay. ahead. Okay. I'm trying not to wash off your seasoning. No, I think that's, that, that, that'll be good. Okay, Perfect. Yeah, yeah well, that's a cup and a half there still. I'm going to turn that up a little. We've got about a high heat of eight. I'm going to bring that to a simmer, and then we'll put the lid on it. Okay. And it's only going to take four to five minutes to cook, because we want it to be opaque. We don't want, we don't want to overcook the, the pot itself. And Carl, to your potatoes, I've got some peppers there for a little bit more colour. Okay. You can add them in there as well. So. Now, I've, I've seen you preach, listen to your sermons. Uh, you're a great communicator. And Thank you. You're a great storyteller, and, and you love to uh, illustrate your sermons with uh, uh, stories from your life and so on, and very inspirational. Thank you. Uh, what, what or who in your life inspires you? Okay. Uh, well, I mean, storytelling is such a part of being a Newfoundlander. Sure, and, yeah. And especially rural Newfoundland. I mean, the entertainment was the story. The, the fabric of the culture was the story. And I mean, I think of the people, my grandparents, as everybody's grandparents, and you hear me tell a lot of stories about my grandparents. Um, and also, I mean, the characters like one character, Uncle Joe Tucker, who was by chance one of the few fishermen that I knew, salmon fishermen. I would spend hours sitting in a stage and he would tell the most wonderful stories. You knew they were lies, <laughs> but you didn't care. Like, you know, and he was known for that, but he was, it was the colorfulness of his character. Yes. And, and, and in the story, there was some history, you know, there was some fiction, but there was a lot of truth, and a lot of it was just telling, you know, how life was. It wasn't easy for a lot of people. The perfect Saturday evening. Well, it was, yeah. and it, it happened all the time, you know. And, and what happened with, um, the reason I tell stories is because 
if I told a story when I'm talking to somebody about a rock in the garden that kids played on, most everybody sitting there can, it mightn't be a rock like that, but there's somewhere they can remember playing school or church or house or whatever on in that rock and automatically you, you connect people, you hook yeah. people and, yeah. that's what, and that's that's what's important. So I'll just pop that lid on there now mm -hmm. and it'll be there for another couple of minutes. Wow. So you're from Newfoundland, did you apprentice in Newfoundland, did you travel? I, well, I did, most, most of my work with the church has been in, in Atlantic Canada. Canada. Yes, yeah. so that's, yeah. I grew up in, in, well, I guess I say central Newfoundland, some people say it's close to western, it's Kings Point, it's right. Springdale area. Yeah. yeah. So it's uh, kind of uh, between center and, and, uh, and west. Yeah. And, you know, like most places has its own particular unique culture. Good. Okay. Uh, I think everything's pretty well. Pretty well on the go now. It's not going to take long at all. Uh, head down to the wine cellar. Okay. Good. Get a wine, and yeah. I will be back. Good. Perfect. Thank you. So as I say, that's only going to take another two or three minutes, and we've got our pommes frites or our French fries ready with a few peppers in there, and a beautiful array of colours there, and I think that's going to go quite nicely with the, with the dish. Oh, good. Hello, Tracy. Hi, Carl. How are you? I'm great. Excellent. We have cod loins today done on the stove. Um, wow, I guess the, loin, oh, the cod loin would be the heftier part of the cod fillet, I think. But yes. anyway, it's, it's good eating. <laughs> and um, what kind of wine would you recommend to go with Ooh, cod? Okay. I've got three choices for you today. The first wine we have is actually a red wine. It's called Malabar from the Niagara Peninsula in Canada. And the grape is Gamay Noir. So Gamay is, tends to be a slight, softer, lighter style wine, um, fermented in stainless steel tanks, so it's gonna protect that fresh, soft style of the grape. Really nice with cod. Mm -hmm. The second wine I have for you is a Chardonnay mm -hmm. from Australia. It's called the McWigan Black Label Chardonnay. And this retails for about $15.49. Softer, um, creamier style Chardonnay, very soft oak. Uh, so it won't be overpowering for the cod. Be lovely. Okay, yep. And the last one we have is from California. It's the Antoine Pinot Grigio. Um, the winery is actually not Antoine. That's the name of the wine. The winery is from Wente. And if you look here at the little logo from the says Food Network, this wine is actually made in partnership with the Food Network. So they use these wines a lot on their shows, hence the name Entwine. Um, Entwining meaning food and wine pairing mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the Food Network with mm -hmm. Wente. And this is about $19.48. Okay. Well, three three good choices yeah, there today. Yeah, so it's, three it's, nice it's wines. It's difficult. It almost comes down to whether you prefer red or white wine, I suppose. Yep. Um, I... I, I think I'm going to go with the McWigan. Excellent choice. Uh, because, well, I haven't tasted any of their white wine, and uh, it's Australian, right? It is correct. And I do, I do like Australian wine. Um, okay, I'm going to go with this one. Thank Perfect. You, thank you very Enjoy. much. Enjoy. Okay. Now our cod is beautifully cooked with our leeks and our tomatoes. Put a little bit of more stock on there. So, let's go and visit Carl and the Reverend at the table. Fish and white wine. <laughs> I think yeah. that's a classic <laughs> pairing, isn't it? <laughs> okay, uh, Reverend Guy, uh, tell us what you think of these cod loins. Oh, I tell you, I've been waiting to, to bite into this. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Yummy. This is really good. Very, very good. Really I love good. the uh, thyme. And it's not thyme overcooked. Fish. Not <laughs> overcooked. <laughs> no, it's and good. it's not overcooked. That's yes. right. Very, very important. So, uh, what is the uh, secret to a good story or good storytelling? Is there, is there a... Yeah, there is. I think it's, it's finding a story that people in the room connects with. Yeah. I can tell a story. If there's no connection, it means nothing. Mm -hmm. So either either the story has to be about something that people can identify with or it has to contain information or truth or whatever that people can, can mm -hmm. apply to, to themselves. Mm -hmm. Other than that, it, it serves no purpose. It's just a story. Mm -hmm. Now, um, did, how long have you... Did, when did you first realize that you, you, you wanted to be a man of the cloth. How, how, how far back? It's kind of grew um, into it. I mean, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of strange. People ask you that question and I think expect you to tell this 
story about how something happened, bang, and yeah, there he was. Yeah. But it's not. You grow into it. And most people who go into ministry or a lot of other helping professions find that the uh, community encourages them. So you grow up in a church community, a larger community, and people kind of look around and say, you know, well, you've got the gifts and skills that would be good for this particular task, and you kind of get nudged into it. And I didn't really ever set out to be a minister, just kind of found my way comfortable with it, and growing up in the church became, you know, used to the idea, and, and uh, here I am. It's, it's, you know, 30 years of God. Yeah, so uh, your, your journey in life, your, your faith journey, has it kind of progressed the way uh, you thought it would? Oh, no, because you never know where it's going to go. And so, no, it hasn't. And, and I mean, the big thing is for all of us uh, is experience. I mean, experience is a great teacher. And, you know, you start off, you're, you're young, you've got all kinds of ideas, and, and you don't really understand the world. I mean, as, as persons, we're not mature. So, you know, things happen. You, you know, no two days happen. are the same. No, I mean, relationships change, yeah. and, and stuff happens. You know, people die, mm. tragedies, all those kind of things. And it shapes who you are. And, and you understand the world differently. I mean, we're all like that. We, yeah. we understand differently than we did 30 years ago. And you know what? Five years from now, we're going to see the world differently again. Mm. This is true. And uh, that's a good thing to keep in you, mind. You mentioned that uh, Gower Street is, is a bigger congregation. How, how big is it? Exact families, I don't know, probably between five and 600 families being a loose right. term for yeah. households, right. you know. Yeah. And, and yeah. It's probably, it's not the largest of the United Church congregations in the city, but it's, it's, it's well up there. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a variety of demographics. There's a lot of seniors. There are some younger people. And, of course, we live in a building that's, what, built in right. uh, 1897. Yeah. The congregation itself will be 200 years old. In yeah. 2015, yeah. very first one in metro area, by the way. Yeah. yeah. So uh, how a lot of a lot of churches worry because you know uh, a lot of congregations are made up uh, for the most part of people who are middle aged yeah. um, or older. Uh, how do you go about attracting younger people to the churches? That's a big question. Well, it's, it's a big, <laughs> how long do we have? <laughs> no, right. no uh, you know, it, it's it's a part of it that. Uh, you know, I, th I think you've got to be a place where people want to come. Yeah. Well, we hope they keep uh, showing up at Gower Me Street. Too. And I'm sure they will as long as you're there. Thank you. Uh, thank Cheers. you for being on, on the program, Reverend Guy. Thank you Reverend for having Guy me. Guy Matthews. And we will be back right after this with Steve's Mrs. Uh, Patricia Watson, who is going to make rhubarb upside down cake. Well. Stay tuned. You've seen the show and now there's a book. Cooking with One Chef, One Critic by Carl Wells with Steve Watson features 120 recipes, more than 200 photos, and plenty of behind the scenes stories from this long running series. Cooking with One Chef, One Critic is available now. Well, Pat Watson, the better half of the Watson household, and not a son from you, Steve? My lips are sealed. Pat Watson did such a good job on the show last year, and her blueberry crisp was so well received, we just had to have her back again this year. So welcome back. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, so uh, blueberries last year, what are we going to do this year? It's rhubarb upside down cake. Oh, excellent. I love upside down cake. <laughs> yeah, I made a pineapple upside down cake yeah. once. Yeah, that was back in the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, so how do we do it? How do we make this? Well, you mix some sugar with your rhubarb and you prepare a pie, glass pie plate with some butter spread in it. So you've already put the sugar yeah, in, right? Yeah, the sugar's mm -hmm. already there. So that's just regular table sugar. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And you just spread it onto the bottom of the pan. Now, is there any reason for using a glass pie plate at all? Well, apparently there's an acid in the rhubarb that can react with your metal, and it would turn your fruit really dark. So it's better to use a glass pan. That's good to know. Yeah. It's kind of like knowing that you shouldn't put tin foil over tomatoes if you're baking something. Because the, 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 I guess it's the acid in the tomato will mm. eat away at the uh, yeah. tin foil. Yeah. And then you uh, take your flour and add more sugar and some salt mm -hmm. and cornmeal and baking powder. And then you just kind of toss that together first. This is a lot easier than making a pie. It's very easy. <laughs> because you just you mix everything together yeah. and then kind of just pour it on yeah. top, right? And you don't have to get your fingers and in you there don't or have anything. To, yeah, there's no rolling pins and no. dusting things with flour and all that no. stuff. And then you add yeah. your butter in chunks. 
And yep. this won't be a smooth batter. It's going to be kind of chunky. Oh, okay. Very good. Okay. And then just kind of move that around in your flour a little bit. Yeah. And the beautiful part about this, this rhubarb was growing in our backyard, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, stop yes. showing. <laughs> Mind you, it's not that difficult to grow. No, no, it, it, no. Just, it just seems to come back every year. Yeah, <laughs> bigger and bigger. <laughs> and then you add your central dairy skin milk. Oh, central you dairy could skin use milk. a, a yeah. pie knife. Or that would probably be easier. Yeah. And an egg. Now you've got skim milk. Yeah. Uh, you could obviously use whole milk. You could. But this helps cut back on the fat, I guess. Exactly, because yeah. you're putting so much butter in it, too. But it does right? turn out just as nice. Oh, as, yeah. Yeah. And then you just toss it around till you have kind of a chunky batter. Oh, I can just see that butter melting yeah. through that batter now. That's the big thing there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and well, it's very easy that. to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it takes on a nice, uh, nice color too. Yeah. The vanilla and everything. And the cornmeal, I think, kind of does that too. Yeah, just move that over there for yeah. you. And then you just. See, it would work in the kitchen? I guess the cornmeal helps give it a, a, a nice texture as yeah, well. Yeah, it's really, really different taste to it too, I find. Not, it's not really distinct, but it's, you, you know it's there. Yeah, food is all about textures mm -hmm. and flavors. And, and then you spread it around like yeah. just over top of your fridge. Nice. And you bake it in the oven for about 40 minutes. Now, we say we've used rhubarb, you could use uh, pineapple, like Carl yeah. mentioned. Uh, peaches? I, peaches, yes. yeah. I've used tin, blueberries, tin, too. Tin peaches, peaches half. Yeah. a half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would yeah. work. Yeah. Um, so, 350? Yeah, 350. 350 for about 40 minutes. Yeah. Then you take it out, let it cool for about five minutes. Cool in the... In the, in the dish. Yeah. And then you put your presentation plate over top of it, turn it upside down, and just give it a bit of a jiggle, and it pretty much just falls right out because you've buttered your... Your pan or your glass dish beforehand. Right. Yes. This is okay. what it look like. And this is what it's like after. And that's what it looks like when it comes out of yes. the oven. Oh, yeah. the smell, the aroma. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then when Pat decorates it, even more so like yes. this. With some whipped yeah. cream and. But you could also you could also decorate this. Uh, you know, you oh, could yeah. put you could put strawberries around there and yeah. a little bit of whipped cream in between. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you could put like a strawberry jelly on it too, you yeah, know, like coat it with that. A glaze, glaze yeah. yeah. That yeah. would be nice as well. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But I, I like this too. Mm -hmm. That's a nice uh, presentation. Presentation, yeah, with the fruit and, and everything. now we have to taste. Oh, I think you should, Carl. I've never tasted you, you, it before. <laughs> I, I love, uh, I've had to taste it probably about a hundred times. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Oh. Very good. You've, you've, Hit a home run again. Good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Bob. Oh, you're welcome. Thank and you. And that's it, folks, for this edition of <laughs> One Chef, One Critic. Mm. And I'm pruning. You're pruning. Preening. Preening. I'm pruning. Preening. You are a prune, <laughs> but you're. <laughs> Why, thank you, Carl. It's all about being prepared. Yes, but I mean, it's just a simple cod loin recipe. Don't you think you're going a bit overboard? Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> uh, it's being prepared. Being prepared. That's my motto. <laughs>